when people talk about proof, I just want to make a couple of remarks about this. Um, we have, since Poincaré's time, a wonderful and uh, delicate uh, apparatus of mathematical logic for dealing with uh, what things depend or do not depend on what other things. Right? This is uh, an elaborate and rigorous branch of uh, mathematics. And Poincaré would never have disputed that, I think. He might have worried about the foundations a la Zermelo, but he would not have disputed the quality of the arguments. But he would have said, look, there's more to it than that. There is more to it than just saying, oh, this argument is rigorous and this is not. And this you see in, in, in many mathematicians writing today, um, that a very long argument um, is not uh, the same as an argument that you immediately understand. A rigorous argument, certainly much better than an unrigorous argument, uh, is not all you want. If you wish to be a creative mathematician yourself, you need more than the results of rigorous arguments. And in the modern jargon, but some of it's 19th century, you think of mathematics as a practice, as something that people do. As they acquire understanding of things, they are enabled to do new things. It's because they understand this piece of mathematics that they can prove this new result. Okay? Um, it's an activity. You practice it in the way that you almost practice a musical instrument. And then there are interesting things. Some people say that this concept is the fr a fruitful concept, or it is the right way to think about things. This is the natural proof of something. Hilbert, for example, uh, would from time to time uh, insist that there were unified methods for tackling certain problems, and one should not stray beyond the bounds of, of the kind of core idea and bring in techniques that lay uh, in another domain of mathematics. And this is not a doctrine. I mean, the first calling to a mathematician is to solve the problem. Um, but it can be the case that some mathematicians say, but can we solve that problem in a different way, a more appropriate way, a way that is more uh, consonant with what we believed before or might be more productive in future? Um, Poincaré's view, then, is that what you want is the overview, the ability to see um, how the details fit in and how they can be um, then um, used. So this is, this is something that he insisted on um, a lot. And, of course, uh, he emphasized very much um, the role of intuition in all of this. And that includes, of course, the psychological feeling that you're on to something. So uh, I'm moving now to my, my concluding remarks. Um, we have a tension, if you like, creative tension is the cliche, between uh, the rigorous side of mathematics and the enabling side of mathematics um, that Poincaré has tried to put across. And I think, actually, in a, um, in a novel... To a, to a novel extent, that not every mathematician at least goes into print saying, look, we need to find the right way to think about these problems. Okay? So I, I thought I would just summarize a few of the things that I found with Poincaré um, that uh, connect with the, um, the, the, the lame du fait. Um, a proof for mathematic, in mathematics for Poincaré is something that enables you to do something else. Right? I once saw a definition of a proof in a logic text that was the definition of a theorem was it was the last line of a proof. And that may be very nice for logicians. But I don't think it's what Poincaré would have accepted or most working mathematicians. A good theorem, I think, is something that enables you to do something new. You can take that theorem somewhere else, um, that's uh, Poincaré's idea. You may well approach this by some act of analogy from what you've already had before. It has a specific virtue. It shows you why some things are the case. And this why is, is, is something that mathematicians talk about. Poincaré is perhaps unusual in dealing with it directly. I think a lot of the way Poincaré writes, or wrote, I should say, um, is 
trying to encourage you to think in a certain way. He is not only interested in the results. He's interested in getting you to think about a domain of problems uh, in a particular way. I thought very clear in the previous talk that Poincaré has to set up a way of thinking about problems involving three-dimensional manifolds. And he has to do a significant piece of work, or you will remain persuaded that somebody should do it, but not persuaded that he did. So of course he delivers that. So he's trying to get you to, to, to organize your thoughts in, in a way that is productive for you. Um, in physics, he's completely aware that the subject is subject to change. Physical ideas are coming and going. They're in conflict with each other. It's true today as it was then. And he asks you to think not about the physical objects, but of the experimental results, the mathematical theory that supports them, and to be a little reluctant to commit yourself uh, to, to objects. For him, a good proof, and this is my last remark, is a new and valid use of the terms that it involves. So thank you very much.